I mean, I write quite a lot in traditional forms, mm. and I don't apologise for doing that. I like traditional forms, but I did begin to feel it was a bit limiting. I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't set out to write in a particular way. I think one of the major misconceptions about poetry <coughs> is that poets have intentions. I mean, this is just the way mine comes out. The very first thing, things I wrote in my early 20s were, were, were terrible poems, really <laughs> awful alas, you do not fancy me, kind of <laughs> self-indulgent <laughs> poems. I like that line, actually. And, uh, <laughs> you, can, you can have it. Alas, you, can you have do it. not fancy me. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you find it hard to, to actually come to this realisation that you were a poet and to be able to say, this is what I do, I write poetry, I am a poet? At a certain point, I decided, when I, was, I, had never, I hadn't been published and I didn't know if I ever would, but at a certain point I decided that that was what came first, that getting better at writing poems was my priority. Mm. It was more important to me than my career as a teacher. Mm. And really, that really made a difference. You know, somehow, once I've made that commitment, that the first, the, but what comes first is getting better at writing poetry, whether or not anyone ever publishes it. So after that, I started to get published. Mm. Um, I mean, I've always loved horses. And, and I um, wrote a novel called um, Polo ages ago. And I went out to do the research. And I went to Sarancester Polo um, Club. And there was two matrons behind me. And one said to the other, wherever my son goes in the world, he is mounted within half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew I was onto a good thing. <laughs> And another sweet story about a jockey um, called Paddy. And Paddy had a beautiful wife called Siobhan. And Paddy had been away, I don't know, riding somewhere in Dubai or Hong Kong. And he came back, and he was lying in bed with his beautiful wife, Siobhan, when suddenly the telephone w went. And Paddy snatched his wife's telephone and said, no, no, ring up the effing meteorological office. <laughs> And Siobhan woke up from her sleep and she said, what's that, Paddy? What's that? And he said, some idiot ringing up to find out if the coast was clear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, uh, when I wrote my first book, I, I was very wary. There was a certain autobiographical element in the first book. In the, it was about a working class kid going to university and making lots of mistakes, and, which is something I, I did. But I didn't want my family to... a working class kid. Oh, I was. I, I mean, Good actor. You know, thank you. <laughs> my, voice is, my voice has changed, but uh, but um, I I was very aware of not wanting my family to think it was about them. So I have a brother and sister, and the the, the character in the book was an only child, and my parents are very much alive. And the character in the book, his father was dead, and I lived in a town called Eastley, and he lived in South End. And I thought, well, that's enough. That'll put them off the, the scent. When the book came out, I took a deep breath and I, I sent it to my parents and I waited for their response. And my dad finally got around to reading it and he, he phoned up and he said, so, um, so I, I've read the book, Dave. And I said, well, you know, it's all, you know, it's all fiction. It's all made up. There's nothing really <laughs> there that's to do with, you know, real life. And he said, no, no, I understand that. But uh, you didn't have to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> 61 and on a diet. Will I end up thin or fat when my heart and brain go quiet? 61 and on a diet yet again. My hopes run riot. Better life, new start, all that. 61 and on a diet. Will I end up thin or fat? <laughs>